path to a Final Four has officially opened up for Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women. We'll talk about the bracket, but specifically this big time matchup between Iowa and Colorado out in Seattle, part of the Sweet 16, and what Iowa needs to do to get it done. First, I want to thank our sponsors, Ascent Nutrition. I talked about them yesterday and our discussion about Aaron Eulis leaving Iowa. A reminder to check out their Lions Main mushroom product it's brand new here on the website at goascentnutrition.com and of course mushrooms are widely known for their many health supportive properties and ascent nutrition's lion's mane mushroom is uniquely cultivated from specific strains that features a rich combination of both mycelium and fruiting bodies their lengthy and unique growing process ensures maximum active constituent production it's grown right here in the usa check out goascentnutrition.com and if you use this code hawkeyes you'll get 15% off your order. Again, 15% off your order by using the code Hawkeyes at GoAscentNutrition.com and Iowa Floor Covering. We appreciate the boys down at IFC in Bondurant. They've still got this great deal on flooring. With self-insulation, you'll get this stuff at 269 per square foot. It's a tough core, click together, 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. Again, visit iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. We appreciate IFC. Please express your appreciation to our show and to our sponsors by supporting all of our sponsors here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. So we're here to talk about Iowa and Colorado. Sweet 16, how nice does it sound to, to say that? Uh, look, uh, we're all disappointed about the men uh, flaming out in the first round yet again, uh, but the bottom line is the Iowa Hawkeye women have an opportunity to make history. Now, they were in the Sweet 16 just a few years ago, but the draw is totally different this time around. They are a two seed. They get an opportunity now to play a six seed in Colorado, fresh off a win at Duke. Going to be a tough one because Colorado is a tough team. So let's talk about the matchup. Here are some different things to keep in mind as we watch the big time showdown this Friday on ESPN. First of all, keep in mind, Colorado, similar to Georgia, they play tough, tough defense. They forced 21 turnovers against Duke the other night 21 now Colorado also turned the ball over 23 different times so they can be a little loose with the basketball this was a low scoring affair I remember it did go to overtime so maybe fatigue plays into this I doubt it does they still have had several days off they played Monday night of course Iowa played Sunday and did not go to overtime against Georgia but this was I mean 61 53 was the final uh, holding the Blue Devils to 53 points in what 45 minutes is an impressive stat they held Duke to 22% from three and 32% overall from the field. Now, Colorado, they don't make a lot of threes themselves. Three out of 11 on the night against Duke um, did beat Duke on the boards by nearly 10. Uh, I mean, they're, they're again, aggressive. They're physical. I look at Jalen Sherrod. She is a tough point guard, made a couple of big plays late in that game on Monday. The Birmingham native at just five foot seven, going to be a, a pretty weighty assignment for Gabby Marshall and certainly Molly Davis. We hope that Molly Davis is healthy. Of course, she got banged up against Georgia, but Sherrod's going to be a handful, uh, and she's a veteran, veteran player for the Buffaloes. Speaking of handfuls, uh, how about Aronette Vonley? She is tough. She's six three, really obviously impressive size for the women's game. You don't see a ton of big posts anymore like a Monica Sonano. And I think Vonley's probably got a little size on Sonano. She's a sophomore from Oregon, and uh, I was impressed with her. She averages uh, just short of five boards a game and 12 points per game. She's a very high clip from the field. Um, scores a lot around the rim, has some nice footwork for a, a, a gal her size, and certainly uh, she's going to cause a problem. She's got some athleticism and some physicality that uh, I don't know that Monica Sonano has seen yet in postseason play. Uh, I think Iowa, I've talked about this, Iowa has handled physicality and length better than they did last year, but this is going to be a different type of ball game. Again, Iowa has played a couple of physical teams here early in tournament play. It's going to be no different against Colorado. Iowa's not necessarily suitable to uh, win a bunch of grind them out type games like we saw with Colorado and Duke, but Iowa has managed to win a couple of games here in the NCAA tournament playing sort of that brand of basketball. Iowa has to cut down on turnovers themselves. I mean, they turn the ball over too many times against Georgia. As I said earlier, Colorado will force you into mistakes. Frida Foreman's a really good three-point shooter, shooting near 40% on the season. Um, she is uh, solid, and she's going to provide some challenge for whoever ends up matching up against Foreman, five foot eleven from Denmark. Here's the deal. I wonder, Iowa played a lot of zone against Georgia. Obviously, it appeared to me that 
Lisa Bluter is more comfortable going zone, especially against a Georgia team that doesn't necessarily light it up from three. And Colorado doesn't light it up from three. I mean, Colorado on the season is shooting from the three-point arc. Uh, they are shooting 34%. So average, we probably shouldn't forget to mention their leading scorer, Quay Miller. They are pretty balanced, but Quay Miller averages 13 and 9 at 6-3 longer. I mean, Vonley's going to give you more girth. She's going to provide a, a bigger punch, but they're going to have to match up with both Miller and Vonley on the on the court at the same time. So uh, I would not be surprised if we see a dose of Sonano and Hannah Stolke together. We hope Stolke is healthy. But those two gals are going to have to play together, I think, on the court at the same time because of the size of Quay Miller and Aronette Vonley. And Quay Miller will stretch the floor as well. She's shooting 33% from three. so not a great percentage, but she can shoot. And uh, again, she gets on the glass. She's a hard worker. She's athletic. And she's going to be a challenge for Iowa as well. We continue to hear speculation about the basketballs being used in March Madness, and it's been more centered on the men's game and the low scoring outputs that we've seen on the men's side of the tournament. But man, I'm looking through some of the scores for the women's game, and uh, I'm assuming, I guess I didn't consult this or, or, or confirm this before uh, jumping on to record this segment, but I'm assuming they're using the same basketballs that the men are using. Basically, obviously, it's slightly smaller size, but uh, th those Wilson balls that some players have complained about, and uh, you know we've heard players complain about how much the balls are inflated. And I've downplayed that as an excuse in the past. And I'm not going to make an excuse if Iowa loses to Colorado. I don't think anybody should make an excuse. Both teams are playing with the same balls. However, right, I would think that if you're having problems shooting with a basketball, it's going to favor, the situation is going to favor a team that is a more defensive-minded team that's, uh, that prides itself on getting stops and grinding out wins. I look at the scores throughout the women's tournament, and we've seen some low, low outputs. I mean, we've had Mississippi State getting beat by Notre Dame, 53 to 48. How about the one seed Stanford putting up 49 and losing to uh, the eight seed Ole Miss? Uh, you had Texas, it was a four seed coming into this region, 51 points held down to 51 points in the second round. Michigan was held to 42 against LSU. Uh, Toledo, 47. I mean, down the list, Baylor shot poorly and, and scored just 58 against Connecticut. It's an interesting trend, and that's why I wonder with Iowa uh, scoring 74, but for an offense like Iowa scoring just 74, that's a, kind of a low number against Georgia. I just wonder if the situation does favor Colorado, right? You're going away from home. I don't know how many Colorado fans are going to travel out to Seattle, um, but Colorado has already proven they're comfortable playing away from home. They had to win two games uh, at Duke, including one against the Blue Devils. To get to this point, Iowa's played two games at home. Can the Hawkeyes shoot well on the road in Seattle? I think there will be a nice group of Iowa fans that probably travel out there. But I would think that potentially the basketball controversy and uh, the shooting woes in both the men's and women's tournaments could favor, uh, should favor Colorado and how they play. And I've said throughout the season, the teams that Iowa is going to have problems with are probably the teams that give you length and give you athleticism. That's kind of Colorado. Now, they don't have the scorers that a Maryland or uh, even a South Carolina. I know South Carolina is really defensive-minded, but obviously they can score a lot of points. UConn scores a lot of points. I mean, there's a reason why Colorado is a sixth seed in this tournament. They don't have that type of scoring mentality, but they will make it hard on Iowa. Now, who guards Caitlin Clark? Um, how will they try to defend the Hawkeyes? That's a good question. Now, maybe it's Foreman. Um you know, Sherrod's a little bit undersized, but boy, I, I would not be shocked given um, her toughness and uh, athleticism if, if she gets her shot at defending Caitlin. But again, I, I'm anxious to see that post battle between Quay Miller, Aronette Vonley, and then the Sonano uh, Stolke tandem. That's my key to victory. Can Iowa win that matchup, that pair of, of uh, matchups? So, We'll see what happens. I will be live with you following the game, folks, with former Hawkeye Tania Davis. Don't miss our post-game show after Iowa and Colorado in the Sweet 16. Join us right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm live for Iowa post-game with from the Hawkeye of the Storm and former Hawkeye Tania Davis.